He was notorious when he was working in the 1890s. He became a cult figure again during the 1960s. It seemed for a while that nothing in the world had not been embellished with one of his designs. Aubrey Beardsley, Aubrey Vincent Beardsley. He was born in 1872. He died in 1898, before his 26th birthday. Beardsley's work was revolutionary in the 1890s. It caused extraordinary offence. He was a freak, as his contemporaries recognised. He was a forerunner of Picasso, Clay, Kandinsky, Munch. He helped to break the mould of 19th century art. His subject matter was the stuff of dreams and nightmares. His sexuality impinged on everything he did. I doubt if the English people yet realize how interested foreigners are in his work. I mean, uh, they think in terms of Hogarth, Turner, Henry Moore, and then the next person, I should say, that they know about is Beardsley. And the interest taken in Beardsley's work abroad is really greater than the interest taken in this country. He was obviously very influential on other artists and on the whole area of modern design. But to me, the essential importance is that he was a very great artist in his own right. Beardsley was an original. He worked by candlelight, usually in a darkened room. A solitary, sickly young man who passed his whole life in drawing and scribbling letters to his friends. He was arrogantly aware of his own talents. Clark, my dear boy, I have fortune at my foot. Daily I wax greater in facility of execution. I have seven distinct styles, and have one success in all of them. Last summer, I struck for myself an entirely new method of drawing and composition. Words failed to describe the quality of the workmanship. The subjects were quite mad and a little indecent. Strange, hermaphroditic creatures wandering about in Piero costumes. Quite a new world of my own creation. Behold me then, the coming man, the rage of artistic London, the admired of all schools, the besought of publishers, the subject of articles. Beardsley's mother and father met and married in Brighton. Beardsley was born there in 1872. They had two children. Aubrey was a year younger than his sister Mabel. He was as fragile, his mother wrote, as a piece of Dresden china. But he was bright and precocious, musical. 
she cherished and encouraged him. She supervised his reading and played the piano fluently each evening to both her children. She chose the repertoire with care. In this way, they did not hear the same thing too often. I would not let them hear rubbish, and it was the same with books. I would not let them read rubbish. Literature and music were Aubrey's early interests. His first drawings are colorful, but very stiff. Often, Beardsley's mother sought financial help from her father, a former surgeon major in the Indian Army. She had genteel pretensions, while Beardsley's father had no money and earned too little to keep his family together. He could never hold down a job, he drank a lot, and he seems to have played little part in Aubrey's education and upbringing. When Beardsley was nine, he was too weak and ill to go to school for two whole years. It was the first sign that he was fatally ill with tuberculosis. Then he recovered and attended Brighton Grammar School. It was a happy period. He was still delicate and thin, but he wrote verses and acted and filled the margins of his edition of Swift with schoolboy scribbles. He also executed a workmanlike copy of a punch cartoon. What's the matter, Tommy, asks the mother. Don't you like the toy your uncle brought? No, mother, says the tearful child. I can't break it. His sister Mabel was his closest companion and his warmest friend. Oscar Wilde said she was like a daisy, while her brother was like a monstrous orchid beside her. They both adored home theatricals. Beardsley drew the posters, as well as acting and producing. He never made a portrait of Mabel, which is strange, but the naked figures in this picture and another strongly resemble her. After his death, an artist called Graham Robertson painted her dressed as a man. She was someone on whom Aubrey relied for advice, for companionship, perhaps for love. I should think the relationship was in sisters, but that doesn't mean to say that they copulated. They might have done, but it doesn't matter really. I think there was an erotic relationship between the two of them. And this had gone on since childhood when they slept in the same bed. Uh, it went straight on until he died. And in many ways, his sister was a guiding light to him. And not perhaps in a technical sense, but she had many of the ideas that he followed. For instance, um, conversion to Roman Catholicism. She began it, he followed her. When he gave up his work as a clerk in the Guardian office, he came back home and uh, he got in quite a row with his parents, but she supported him, and that gave him the strength to make the break. And clearly, I think she was a most important factor in his life, probably the only person he could be said to have loved at all. I think his sister um, was perhaps the one sort of ordinary friendship that he managed. Um, there not really been time for anything else. And it was, of course, a friendship um, not, um, not in any way twisted by the urgency of his ambition. I think um, in relationship to people like Oscar Wilde, for example, he was always aware that he had a name to make and he might be able to make it on the back of Wilde's reputation. On the other hand, Wilde might be using him and so on. And I have the impression that in his relationship to Mabel Beardsley, that those tensions were certainly absent. He wasn't in any way envious of her attempts to make a living on the stage and so on. I think he simply rejoiced in them in a simple, friendly way. 
That is my impression of their relationship. Mabel and Aubrey Beardsley were enthusiastically religious when they were young. They attended this church in Brighton for two services each Sunday, morning and evening. The stained glass windows above the altar were designed by William Morris, Edward Burne Jones, and Dante Gabriel Rossetti, the Pre Raphaelite Brotherhood. Burne Jones was Beardsley's first patron and a great influence. He encouraged him at a crucial moment. I seldom or never advise anyone to take up art as a profession, but in your case, Mr. Beardsley, I can do nothing else. Beardsley clearly remembers.